Prime Minister reaffirms her commitment to regional integration. Jamaica and China strengthen bilateral relations and a call to build on achievements in the education sector. This is Jamaica House Weekly. I'm Samantha Allen. I am a committed regionalist who intends to do everything within my power to build on our achievements to date in order to make the next 50 years a period that will bring increasingly improved social economic conditions for our Caribbean people. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller at the closing ceremony for a conference hosted by the Sir Arthur Lewis Institute for Social and Economic Studies, SADICES, based at the University of the West Indies, Mona. It was held under the theme 5050 Critical Reflections in a Time of Uncertainty. The Prime Minister said there was no shortage of ideas in the Caribbean, but more needed to be done to put them into action. I will mandate all my ministers and our policy advisors to read the publication. We must convert your useful ideas into positive actions. Mrs. Simpson Miller added that even though problems may arise, the Caribbean should cooperate more in areas dealing with air transport and communication. She said issues dealing with the free movement of people within the region, as well as making the Caribbean Court of Appeal, CCJ, the final appellate court, should also be addressed. And Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller met with the visiting Chinese Vice Minister of Commerce last week. This, as Jamaica China relations was strengthened with the signing of a $423 million agreement following bilateral talks at Jamaica House. The Prime Minister thanked the Chinese Vice Minister for his government's commitment to social responsibility and job creation, adding that she was looking forward to the diversifying of Chinese interests in Jamaica. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller had encouraging words for GSAT awardees at a special function last week. The awardees, who were children of employees at the Office of the Prime Minister and the Cabinet Office, received the book vouchers. Aim high. And do not let anybody tell you that you cannot succeed. When they speak failure on your life, you must talk success. When they say you can't and they place hurdles in front of you, plan how you will get over those hurdles. The Prime Minister reminded the children and their parents that they would be rewarded in the future for their hard work and determination. Do well, as I know you can, bearing in mind that the last four letters in the word Jamaican are I C A N I C A N. Education and training form a critical part of the foundation on which any great nation must be built. And so, Information Minister Senator Sandria Faulkner is urging all stakeholders, government, teachers, parents, private sector and civil society to build on our achievements in the education sector. As a nation on a mission with a vision, she says significant inroads have been made in education, particularly in accessibility and achievement. In 1962, less than 1,000 students were enrolled in universities, but 50 years later, that figure stands at almost 70,000. Similarly, the number of children placed in secondary schools has significantly increased from 2,000 in 1962 to almost 42,000 in 2012. As for the literacy rates, the minister said today, 8 out of 10 Jamaicans can read and write. Gross enrollment in pre-primary and primary levels stands at 99%, while at the secondary level, it is 97%. Senator Faulkner was speaking at Court's Customer Scholarship Awards Ceremony, where 50 students at various levels of the education system received financial assistance to further their studies. And over the past week, Minister with Portfolio Responsibility for Sport, Natalie Nita Headley, said the government was committed to fielding a larger team of sportsmen and women at the 2016 Olympic Games to take place in Rio, Brazil. She was speaking at the launch of the 8th Courtney Walsh Award for Excellence in Sport. 
The minister also sent her condolences to the family of the assistant national sports coordinator at the Institute of Sports, Bruce McFarlane, who died on August 22. She described Mr. McFarlane as a true champion of sports and a pioneer of primary school football competitions, adding that he was a sports enthusiast and dedicated worker. Bruce McFarlane was employed to InSports from 2002. And that's it for this week's edition of Jamaica House Weekly. Join us next time for the latest out of the office of the Prime Minister.